Yo, what is up, YouTube, man? Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the best 6 foot 11 three-level scoring glass cleaner. The name is Comp. The build is Comp. I'm super excited to show you guys this. If you guys are new, if you want to drop me a like and subscribe, I do appreciate it a ton. It helps me out a ton. Let's get into this. So, you want to make it at Power Forward, 6 foot 11 max wingspan in 230 on the weight now i'm going to explain every you know decision why i went this high why i went this wingspan why i went this weight but here's the stats we got so finishing i mean you're 611 a lot of people like to make these 6869 maybe even 67 bigs quote unquote you know they're like i'll be fine but with this build you'll be able to bully smaller builds like that you got the driving dunk 86 now 93 is nice but you can definitely do with this you get the gold limitless you get the posterizer on silver and you get two of the contact driving dunks the off ones and off twos and i have a build like this it's plenty to get the contact dunks and I can still have the driving layup, the close shot, the standing dunk on this build. You get the 80 standing dunk, so you can get the pro big man contact dunks. And you see the shooting, it gets an 81 three-pointer and 80 mid-range. This build will be able to finish on the inside. It'll be able to hit driving dunks or layups. It'll be able to shoot post fades. It'll be able to spot up. It'll be able to pick and pop. This build right here can really do it all on offense and it's tall. Again, most people are going to be undersized against you. If you end up getting matched up against a 7-3 center, this build will actually have a very nice chance to defend them with the playmaking. Now, this is something you guys could change if you want. I give it 70 ball handle. You know, your speed with ball is not that high. You're not really going to be doing too much dribbling, but at the 70 ball handle, you do get the big hop back. It just gives you the option to where if you do get the catch and they close out, you can definitely drive past them, do a couple moves and score with the driving dunk or the driving layup on this build. When it comes to defense, 93 for gold anchor for the block, 93 defensive rebound for the gold rebound chaser. Make sure your vertical is 75 so you have enough vertical to get the driving contact dunk packages and the standing contact dunk package. All around, I mean, look at this too. You get shock rating takeover, sharp rim or glass. The build name really describes this build absolutely perfect. It's called a three-level scoring because you can score from all three levels, the midi, the three-point, and the inside, and you're a glass cleaner. You're going to be able to stop anybody in the paint. You have a lot of speed on this build, surprisingly, and it fits in well to any game mode you want to play, whether it's twos, threes, rec. You could come out here with this at the four and have a bigger center on your team. That could be crazy. You guys will have tons of size compared to most teams. And maybe you don't want to be a giant 7'3 slower center, but you don't quite want to make that super undersized 6'8 or 6'9 build. This is a nice in-between when it comes to the finishing badges. You get limitless takeoff on gold, super cheap. Gotta throw that on, absolutely. Have to have posterizer on just to get the maximum amount of contact dunks as we can. A lot of these other badges, it's really up to you. I am a firm believer that Aerial Wizard is worth having on. Bronze, silver, even gold. When I put that badge on my build, I felt like he was getting lobs in the air way more efficiently. And he was getting those contact lobs like crazy. Now, the tier 3 badges, Rise Up, Bully, Masher, Fast Twitch. You can't have all of them. It's going to be impossible even if you add finishing badges to this build. But you can kind of play with it and switch things around. You know, maybe you feel like driving more one game. You want to have Bully on just to kind of shove people with your shoulder. Another game, you want to play more center, more in the paint if you're going up against an undersized build. Remember, you have badge layouts, so you could have one where, you know, this is your badges you run when you're going up against a tall center and then when you see somebody small you could go to badge layout two where you're set up to be more of a masher in the paint tons of options when it comes to shooting badges i'm going to make a video about this but i'm going to go ahead and say this right here too i think green machine is going to be one of the most slept on shooting badges all year you need the green to hit shots and green machine is a badge that opens up your green window making it easier to green shots i mean it is what it says when it comes to other badges, Claymore is really good. All you got to do is stand still for a second and you get a boost off that for your shot. You got to have catch and shoot on. Corner specialist, of course, they're self-explanatory. It's going to be tough to have badges like Dead Eye, Limitless Range, even other things like Guard Up. You could add some more shooting badges when you get your plus four if you want to. This combination I have right here will be enough to shoot consistently, but having more shooting badges is never a terrible idea. It lets you do some crazier things with the shot. When it comes to the playmaking, like I said, this build is not really a build you want to be dribbling on too much, but you see, you do get quick first step. You do get some things like vice grips. So when you get those rebounds, you're not going to get plucked. And you do get some animations at 70 to where 
you know, you're not a statue. If you do get the ball in your hands, you can move with it. You can do a little bit of dribbling. And you do have some strength, so throwing on something like Clamp Breaker, where maybe you could just run through your opponent if it's a smaller defender, won't be a terrible idea to have. Floor General, of course, always helps your teammates out. In a game like this, where it's not the easiest year we've ever had to shoot, now when it comes to the defensive badges, this is a really fun category. You get Interceptor, of course, you want to have that on. It's really tough to choose because you kind of want to have all four of the tier three badges. You get things like Box Out Beast at tier two, which is nuts. Post Down Lockdown is actually great because there are a lot of centers backing people down. Even guards are backing people down because they can't do anything else. Of course, Rebound Chaser as high as it goes. Same thing with Defensive Anchor. I would definitely make one of those two badges your core badge. It doesn't matter which one. And then I would just spread the rest of the badges out a bit. Challenger for those perimeter contests. I know you've probably heard that chase downs aren't that great this year, but on this build, athletic, six foot 11, tall with some speed. Having chase down artists, you know, bronze, silver, higher. It could be huge. You could actually get some crazy blocks with this build. I got a little bit of gameplay, not, you know, anything crazy, just to show you though what this build really is capable of. It can set screens. You see, I'm just in the paint. Mashing is a bit nerfed this year. It's nothing like last year where anybody can mash on anybody, but if you have a height advantage, it doesn't matter if you're driving because you got the driving layup, if you're dunking because you got the standing and driving dunk, or taking a close shot because we got the close shot on this build. If you want to post hook, you can do that as well. There's a lot of options to score in the paint. You see right here, I just go past my defender, get the lob. This build is going to be a monster at catching lobs. You can even throw on the crazy park ones if you want. Standing dunk, it's going to pop up every single time. You'll be able to get those standing contact dunks. Right here, I did a little bit of dribbling to show you guys. It can move a tiny bit. Now, you're going to see that again. This build can get those crazy contact dunks. I wasn't expecting between the legs. Crazy dunk. It would have been nice to green that. But you saw I got the crazy block on the other end. And I'm going to show you guys getting a contact dunk soon. Again, back-to-back -back blocks on this build. Going, driving at Kimba. Yam it all over his head. If there's a guard in the paint, if you get a mismatch, it's so easy to green those dunks if you get used to this meter. Again, though, it's not easy to green that. I mistimed it twice. That is one thing with the dunk meter. It's different timing, the different dunks you have on. That's why dunking with a dunk meter is most definitely harder than actually shooting because you get used to your jump shot. It's the same fluid animation every time. Even though this year when it comes to jump shooting, the jump shot changes based on contest, based on how much your stamina is. That's why you see a lot of people struggling. They don't know that yet. This build gets the 80 post hook. All you need is an 80 close shot to post hook on any build. You can also put on pro touch again. Not a contact standing dunk, but a little bit of contact. He has rim take right here, and I'm able to lay it over his head. And I know you guys are wanting to see the jump shot. So hold tight. I'm going to end the game with a nice smooth jumper. Get a contest right here. I was behind on the play. Able to recover. Able to use the vertical. Step it back to the corner. Get him out of here, man. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. This is Sonic. I will catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.